I listened very carefully tonight, and I think uh, for me personally, this is personal, I think the only answer to all of these things is to be more Jewish. To be more and more and more Jewish. And as you mentioned, it's not going away. So let's master it. And as you said, it emboldened you. And as you tell so many stories, it emboldened you. I'm Jewish. This is what they think of the Jews. Who's this guy, Shakespeare, anyway? It's a great play. It's a great story. There's one Jew. You can, I'm not going to write a review on your, on your talk tonight. But to be more Jewish, but to be more Jewish means to know more. And to know more means first to know more about Jewishness. And so tonight I want to give you a gift. Maybe you have it. Catherine and I were joking. Are you giving Stephen Green a lot of book that you think he doesn't have? <laughs> he definitely doesn't have the book that I'm going to give him tonight. He may have a version of the book. But I want, I want to say this. Shakespeare lived in the end of the 16th and beginning of the 17th century. The same time that Shakespeare lived, there was another great writer, actually uh, an anthologist, essentially, whose name, Yushir, and I learned this week that your name is Yaakov Shlomo, Ben Sviel. So St Stephen Greenblatt's Hebrew name is Yaakov Shlomo ben Sviel. So at the end of the 16th century, the beginning of the 17th, there was a great Jew whose name was Yaakov, and his father's name was Shlomo. So he and his father shared your two first names. And we have a concept in Jewish law that says, which is that the child is an extension of a father. And so if this man's father was Shlomo and he is only an extension of him, there's a conjunction there and the two names become one. So in some ways you share his name with him. And what he did was, in the period of the, perhaps the greatest literary scholar Shakespeare of, of all times, what he did was he says, you know, the Jews are going to open up the Talmud and the Talmud is very complex. It's 2,000 pages of arguments and fighting and dialectic and raw, real, subtle dispute that goes on among sages in really deep commercial law and marriage law and divorce law and very, very, very nuanced arguments. But who can get through all that? Who can possibly master that? The average person, the ignorant Jew, <coughs> even the scholar will never master it. So what he did was he said, ah, the literature, the literature, Stephen, he says, let's, let's find the literature. So he collected all the stories of the Talmud, the legends, the parables, the allegorical narratives, all the easy stuff that one could read and maybe be Talmudic about. No one's more Talmudic about Shakespeare than Stephen Greenblatt. He takes two lines and writes chapters and, and extrapolates. You don't even know where he's going with it. How could he possibly make those assumptions, Professor Stephen Greenblatt? But he does, because that's the art. That's the art of literature. So Yaakov Shlomo, this great man, Ibn Khabib, who goes from Spain for obvious reasons, to Salonika in the 15th century. And then the sixth starts to compile all the stories. And he writes, a, and he takes that book and he collects it. And he calls it Ayin Yaakov. He says it's the Eye of Jacob. It's the Eye of Jacob. And there's a lot of reasons why he called it that. My simple reading is because the eye sees. So to pierce, to understand Jacob, the third of the patriarchs, the Jewish people, here are the stories. Here's the literature. So Adam and Eve, it happened, it didn't happen. Some believe it, some don't. Read the book. The myth, the enlightenment has arrived, but the literature will always be there. So we take Ayn Yaakov. Ooh. Do you have an Ayn Yaakov at home? No. I found the book that Stephen Greenblatt doesn't have. <laughs> and it's three volumes. There were eight or nine different versions of the Ayn Yaakov in the bookstore. I bought you the one raw. <laughs> I, have the, I have the English translation in there. But I don't, want you to get, I don't want you to get carried away. And I'll tell you why I don't want you to get carried away. Because I'm going to start. We'll start together. We'll do it maybe once a month, maybe once a two. <laughs> I'll get on the phone. And we'll read the greatest literature. And then you'll write the English commentary <laughs> on the Ayn Yaakov. And so this is my gift. It's a set of Ayn Yaakov, the collection of stories collected from the Talmud, thousands of pages. And perhaps that literature will measure up to the great literature. <laughs>